Director of Photography, Alec Watson. This is the second part of a two-part video. They're not exactly A and B, but they're completely related. In the first video, I talked about the case for, or I suggested kindly, that for a lot of people, there's actually maybe an advantage on newer cameras to shoot JPEGs over RAW because JPEGs are processed by cameras and the manufacturers know everything about their chip to optimize it and can give you a really great result, whereas a RAW is a bunch of data that doesn't have that great result right off the bat. So in this second part, I wanted to give you the best of both worlds because a lot of people have asked for that. They, they say, Alec, I wish I could make my RAW files look like the JPEGs because the JPEGs out of the camera look fantastic, but I want all that rich data. And, I, and I'll show you, it doesn't make a huge difference, but there definitely is more data in a RAW file. Here is a little bit of a deeper dive, but here is how to get your RAW file to look like a manufacturer's JPEG. Now, two things. You have to set up your camera to shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time because you need those images side by side, so it's gonna do both. The other catch is you have to turn off uh, lens compensation. So when your camera uh, produces a JPEG, a lot of the new cameras have uh, computer algorithms in that are gonna fix a vignette problem from the lens. They're also going to fix lens distortions. You, in fact, actually need that lens distortion to be on there, and you need that vignette to be on there because that's actually physically changing the way the, the, the shape of that image is, and we need the shapes to be identical for this to work. So the short version, again, you have to turn off lens compensation for, for both vignette and for optics, and you got to do that in your camera. I can't tell you how to do that, but for this technique, that's what you got to do. So I'm going to take our RAW file, and I'm gonna pull that into the edit suite. As I mentioned in the first video, the like raw files, they're just data. They have no picture. And so that's very often why when you pull an image up into the edit suite, it shows up really nicely for a second and then it changes. And you go, oh, that's disappointing. Why doesn't it look as good? It's because the, there's a JPEG, uh, a, a low resolution JPEG that came from a JPEG image in your camera and it's encoded into it and you get to see it for just a second before it disappears. Now, this image I shot in RAW, but I simultaneously shot a JPEG, which is this one here, and I'm gonna right click on this image and add it as a new layer. It's gonna pop in over the top and suddenly our color is so much better. Well, over on the right, we have two layers here. This is the JPEG, this is the RAW you can see that the JPEG is arguably kind of a nicer image, but it is a JPEG. What does that mean? It means that uh, the, uh, the luminosity, the, the, the brightness, the dynamic range has been reduced, color's been added, and both of those things optimized by the manufacturer. However, one of the things that JPEGs don't have much information on is in the very top end, they get burnt out, and there's usually more information somewhere in the top that you can get out of a raw file. And there's definitely more information in the deepest shadows of a raw file than on a JPEG. And that's the nature of a thing called bit depth. There's no test on this. I'm, I'm just giving you the info. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna show you the technique. Now I'm gonna take this image and I'm gonna add yet another copy. So now I'm gonna have two, two versions of the JPEG on top of the raw file. So I could turn off this JPEG, nothing happens. Turn off this JPEG, we see the raw underneath. Now there's a thing called blend modes. We're gonna take this image here and we're just gonna take what's called the luminosity data from it, which means the, the brightness to darkness. We're gonna go in and look for a word called luminosity. And now instead of being a JPEG over top of my raw file, I just have data for, it's kind of like if I were to go in and adjust the, the fill light and the highlights and optimize the contrast, I've taken what the camera would actually do and taken that optimized luminosity and added that optimized luminosity numbers to the raw file underneath. And so now, it looks like this. So we've got a darker version. Again, this is not pleasing because there's no color information. 
So what do I do? I go up to this layer and now I'm going to make this a color layer. This is where I'm going to add just color only to the top of that and boom, this looks exactly like the JPEG, but it's not because it's color and lightness laid over top of a file that's got a whole bunch more data. Let me show you where it will make sense. If you're somebody who works in the edit suite and you work with raw files, this is, this is the technique to get your manufacturer's look on top of a raw file. But as I said, with a raw file, you're going to get more information in the shadows. In part one of this, when I, when I made, when we were working in the develop suite, when I made the argument for using JPEGs, I tried to lighten up this area and there was really no data in there to lighten it up. But I'm going to suggest to you that this is where this technique will shine. I'm about to put a curve on and I'm going to put a curve that brightens the shadows. This is going to brighten everything. I'm going to look in this area and now I can see information down into those shadows. I can definitely see that rock back there. I'm going to go up to my curves. I'm going to click on this layer mask and I'm going to invert the mask, which means basically make it black. So this is now doing nothing. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a paintbrush and I am going to paint with a pretty big brush that's very soft and just has a little bit of flow. I usually let 20% and I'm going to paint over the shadows. And what you'll notice is I'm going to start to pull through shadow data that just wasn't there before. Now the color's a little wonky on this. I could make this just a luminosity layer, which means don't change my color, just change my lightness, which is kind of what this area does. If I toggle that on and off, we can see, and, and it's not perfect. Uh, in fact, I'm hitting here, which doesn't look good. Let's just go ahead and zoom in further. Let's make it 100% and over to that corner. There we go. I'll toggle that on and off. And is it perfect? No, it's not. But is there more data there? Yes, there is. It's probably a little heavy handed. We can take the opacity and pull it back. And like I said, this, is, this really only optimizes just a tiny bit because there's just a tiny bit more information on a RAW than a JPEG. But we look in there and especially when you zoom out to fit the whole screen, you're going to go, oh, there's data in there. I can actually see some detail on that cliff as opposed to nothing, which you would see in the JPEG. It's up to you whether that looks good. I would, for, the, for that one, I would probably actually leave it dark because it creates a sense of depth. But in pictures where you wish you could get into some shadow detail, it's possible with this technique. And the reverse is also true. I can get more out of the lightness because I've got a raw file. So to show you that, I'm going to take curves and up in the super high end, up where the sun is, if I pull this way down, you'll see that the sun star gets what I would call sharper. There we go. I'm going to make a curve that brings down the top end. We're going to right click on that mask and invert the mask to turn it back off. And I'm going to paint with a fairly big brush with a whole lot of feathering. So a soft, very soft edge on my brush. And I'm just going to paint around the sun in white. And this effect, you've got to keep it really subtle because there's only a smidge of difference when it comes to the sunshine between a, a raw file and a JPEG. But there is, in fact, more data in the raw file. And if I toggle these on and off, you will see that the sun does in fact get smaller and tighter. And that means that those sun stars, those spokes, they also get a little bit sharper because they're getting smaller and tighter. And if I do a few passes, the goal is to be subtle on this. Uh, so a low amount of flow. If you, do the, if you do the flow too big, here, let me just, I can undo on this. 
you will see the effect immediately. And it's like, ah, that didn't work. So control Z to undo that. Back to a, a light touch, so a low flow. And we just do this area really subtly. It's hard to see that you're actually even doing anything. But if I toggle this on and off, it's actually making quite a bit of difference to the size of that sun star. There we go. These aren't huge differences, but if you're really trying to get the, the absolute nth degree out of a RAW file, a RAW file does in fact have more information than a JPEG, and those are the places that you are likely to find those differences, is in the extreme darks and the extreme lights. When you use this technique, you can take the color and the luminosity, so the lightness information and the color information from the manufacturer's JPEG, apply it as a luminosity layer and a color layer over your RAW file to get the lightness and the color information. And then after that, you can work on, I can, and I can use dodging and burning as well. I just happen to like the way curves do this because everything's very reversible. And for instance, lastly, if on the shadow detail, if I decided that was too much, I can change my luminosity and make it back to a shadow or I could brighten it up more. Same, same up here, if I decided that it was too much, I could split the difference with opacity and make it super subtle. And that's why I use curves instead of dodge and burn, because when you dodge and burn it, there's no going back. This is basically the same as dodge and burn, except you've got infinite control. And that's, that's the whole idea of editing in the edit suite is having infinite control. So that is, that's how to do that one. Sorry, that was a deep dive, but for anybody who wants to know how to do it, there is your answer. So go out, feel free to share these with me. Find me on social and, and the folks at ACDC on so, social, share, share those images, we'd love to see them. And in doing that, you are making the world a better and more beautiful place. Yeah.